Yeah, I mean, I think it's, it's just kind of curious to have something that started out as a, a fundraising meet, you know, specifically for Hayward Field, that gets renamed for Prefontaine and that it's still, that it's grown beyond. I mean, now that we're hosting the Diamond League final, I mean, that's kind of impressive to kind of chart that. As you know, they started a, a meet called the Restoration Meet in 1974, and the object there was to raise money so that they could replace the Western grandstands, which, which they did. But before the next meet uh, could occur, a year later, Pre had passed, killed in the auto accident, and they renamed the Restoration Meet for Pre, and so it became the Prefontaine Classic. The enthusiasm really took a dive. You know, Pre was so popular and people's hearts were broken when he died. We were all devastated. Um, I re distinctly remember that standing on the line of the 1500 when the national anthem is usually played, they call it a minute of silence that probably felt like it lasted a year. He was our glory and we were his. There was a real change in the amount of enthusiasm and uh, the pre-classic uh, wasn't so good. It was uh, kind of a glorified all comers meet really and there was very few people attending and it just wasn't good. I had some ideas that I thought might improve the meet because we wanted it to be an international meet, we wanted it to be better. One of the things that I uh, was inspired by was my own competitions. I had run in the uh, Bislett games in Oslo, and this meet was so great, it was so incredible. And I saw that, well, you know, track and field done properly can be really entertaining. And the second thing I was inspired by was Pre had put on this uh, Finnish tour. The idea there being to get some of these great Olympic athletes from Europe over here and have them compete against our athletes in our stadiums in our season and give us a fighting chance. And uh, we set out to, you know, do something different. I got a lot of criticism for not putting on the normal meet with every last event and, you know, going for seven hours and stuff. But when they experienced the meet, they liked it. And then in 1982, we did really well. I mean, we just packed the stands and we had a, a world record by Mary Decker. We had a, an American record by Matt Centerwitz. And yeah, we, we did pretty well. People just saw that we were doing something really exciting and they liked the fact that they could go to the meet. It was three hours long. It was intense the whole time. And then that was it. Name is Tom Jordan. I'm the former meet director of the Prefontaine Classic from 1984 to 2021. Two friends that I'd met in Moscow, Gary and Jules Trigero. Gary at the time was the vice president of Oregon Track Club. One day he called me up and said that Pat Holleran had gotten a full-time job and was going to resign as meet director. Would I like to be the meet director? So I became the meet director in 1984, and that was also the first year of Nike's involvement. It just evolved. They brought in a lot of the Nike athletes, which were international. On the Eugene Register Guard sports section, above the fold, there was a color photo of Bubka with the title, The King of the Vault Arrives. I mean, from then on, it was, you know, gangbusters at the box office. I think the hype was tremendous, and the aura was uh, phenomenal because they weren't used to international meets here. Nobody was. Eventually, it got to the point where Nobody even mentioned it. It was like, of course, Pre is on my schedule. The fields having one, two, three, fourth in the world competing in each event. Every athlete is calling and every athlete is complaining that they've been trying for three days to get through it. It was like every year was the fields were better than the previous year.
There is now a sense that if you are the world's best, you will compete at Pre. Well, I was a big Pre fan, so my inspiration was putting on the kind of meat that Pre would be real comfortable with and would enjoy. And I think we achieved that, and I think they've achieved that for most of the time since then as well. You know, the Diamond League has rankings, and typically the Prefontaine Classic ranks in the top three in the world. That's something I think we can be proud of in, in a lot of ways.